Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 289, Three Tricks That Make Male Testosterone Therapy Safer and More Effective. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So Dr. Maupin, you got into hormone replacement therapy treatment modality for women as a natural evolution in your gynecological practice. You, yes. you worked with women, you focused on women, and you began to treat women who had the same problems that you'd had in your life. Mm-hmm. And, and you write about that in your book, uh, th- This Secret Female Hormone. Right. And mm-hmm. eventually, you began, but women began to bring their husbands in. Uh, and, and As begged me to bring their to bring their husbands yeah, please, in please so they could and keep up. Them. And you're like, but I don't treat men. And then they're like, nah, you got to treat my husband because he has these issues. And what you've found over the years is that your your practice is balanced, and now you treat mm-hmm. men and women pretty equally mm-hmm. for hormone replacement therapy. But what you found is that it's somewhat easier. Uh, through the regulatory systems to have options for providing men with testosterone than it is for women because that's, that's still blocked by the FDA in so many ways. For women. Um, so there are clinics and agencies around the country that advertise regularly, come on in if you got low T, we'll fix you mm-hmm. for men. Mm-hmm. And we just pop you some testosterone and you're good to go. <laughs> and it's an easy thing for a doctor to prescribe. It seems like mm-hmm. it's no, no brainer. The FDA is not going to get in the way. They allow it, and you. And they don't have any of those pesky female hormones that interfere. They don't interfere. have any of those other issues. So they sell high volume, uh, high frequency places, high dollar places, mm-hmm. and you say that's problematic because there are side effect issues for men who receive testosterone treatments yes. that. A lot of people don't know about or realize or measure or treat. And so if you just get testosterone, well, that's all well and good and fine. But what if you develop some of these issues? And and one of the issues that you've told me about is Mm -hmm. that the men who get testosterone replacement therapy, a certain percentage of them develop issues with increasing levels of estrogen. Right. So talk talk to me about that. Well, as men age... They get, they just naturally gain belly fat, gain fat, and in that fat, they um, take their testosterone and it is made into estrogen in the fat. So the more fat you have, the more the more estrogen you convert your testosterone into. So that does two things: it not only decreases your testosterone, but it elevates the estrogen and ties up and that binds your testosterone. So it does, it's a double whammy. So. Wait a minute. When you say it binds your testosterone, that means the remaining testosterone that's not converted into estrogen is then not usable for what you want it for in the body. Right. It's 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 free to go where it's inactivated. It's inactivated by um, so estrogen, it is, it's, it's like cancels out getting the testosterone, right? So even if a man is aging and making testosterone, mm-hmm. then when I check their levels, they may have a great total, which may be like 800, but they've got almost no usable, usable testosterone. Yes. So their body sees only this small number, mm-hmm. small amount of, we call it free when it's active, of active testosterone or free testosterone. So when I see somebody with the high total, the low free, and then a high estrone level and estradiol level, I look at that and I go, that's somebody that I could actually, if I could, I could actually treat with just a medicine, not giving them testosterone. I could give them a medication called Arimidex, which is an aromatase inhibitor. It inhibits the um, conversion of testosterone into estrogen. So some people who are still making testosterone as they age and have a lot of belly fat, 
they make so much of the uh, estrogen that they don't feel their testosterone. I can block it with that with that one medication, which is cheap, easy. They don't need testosterone replacement in general. Oh, interesting. So those people... You just find a way to make what they're producing usable. Usable, right. So okay. so that's that's one way to do it. But then there are other men who take testosterone and make estrogen out of it. And it's it's so prevalent, It's there's so much of it, uh, that the Arimidex doesn't work. Or they are not making enough testosterone, and they're just making estrogen. So their, their total is low, their free is low, their estrogens are high. Those men need testosterone, but if you just give them testosterone, they're going to make estrogen out of it. So it's going to counteract. There's And, and the other thing is, I only use pellets for, for a big reason, and that is because testosterone placed under the skin does not convert into estrogen as much as any other form of testosterone. So gels make about between 60 and 80% of the testosterone you use as a gel becomes estrogen. Oh, wow. So we see men getting higher and higher uh, doses and lower and lower free testosterone levels. So, so if you have a doctor who just says, oh, yeah, I'll give you some androgel. Here, take some androgel. And you feel great for the first month and you feel lousy and they give you more androgel, a higher dose. Great. And then lousy. Then you're, you're up at like eight times the normal level and all you're doing is getting man boobs and belly fat out of it. So what we used to call a beer belly is probably a testosterone belly. It's an estrogen belly. An estrogen belly. belly. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's a non-testosterone belly. The yeah. reason we value six packs is because that's the testosterone belly. Yeah. So we, it's it, there's not a lot of fat inside the abdomen and not a lot of fat under the skin. Can, can you shoot for a three pack? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes three packs all you can do. <laughs> I'm so short. That's all I'd get anyway. Yeah. Or <laughs> actually, well, you know, it's an even number. With you though, I had no idea. As a reasonably educated person that men had estrogen issues and estrogen hormones and that women had testosterone issues and testosterone hormones. But right. we both systemically use both hormones. We do. And we, and we have to have the balance adequately adjusted for each sex. And Arimidex is a way to help balance the testosterone. Mm -hmm. and, and, and whether or not they make testosterone or have to have it delivered, uh, and preferably through pellets. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to watch for and measure the conversion ratio ratio for estrogen. And after we get somebody organized, we have to kind of follow track. every year yes. to make sure after everything's normal, okay. we normalize them. We have to follow them every year or even more often in some to make sure they haven't decided their body hasn't started making a lot of estrogen. Estro estrogen in any form is not good for your prostate. Estrogen in any form is not good for your breast because men get breast cancer who have a lot of who have a lot of estrogen. So, and it's not that it causes it; it's just that men have receptors that aren't supposed to have estrogen. estrogen. They're supposed to have testosterone. So, so it replaces the testosterone. First. Yeah, it bind yeah. it binds the right. receptor site. So it's it was they were made for you were made for testosterone, not estrogen. You need a little bit for your brain and a little bit for your bones. And that's the catch. Some people just want to, some doctors just don't know. They hear about a Remedex. They give you a bunch of Remedex and then you have no estrogen, not good for your brain. Can't think very well. So are you telling me that if I have, if I'm smart, I have an estrogen saturated brain, not a testosterone saturated No, you brain. just have a little bit of estrogen. Okay. If you're saturated, you're not going to think very well either because you okay. need testosterone. So it's got to be balanced. It has, it has to, to be, be balanced. So and you're argument against the mass production clinics or mass right. market systems <laughs> yeah. is that those doctors don't either know that or regulate that or care or care. So, I mean, it's just about getting a minute people in and out of the door, yeah. you know, basically, and it may save somebody a hundred dollars here and there, right. but they're, they're eventually not going to get the, the effect. But your quality of life is more that miserable. testosterone. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not as miserable usually as it was before you took testosterone, mm -hmm. but you keep falling back into all the old symptoms. Right. And that's one of those, you know, I look for patterns and stories. Right. And when, when patients, when gentlemen come in and they say, well, it was great. I felt awesome for the first month. And then, oh, I felt terrible. And I was tired and I couldn't think and I gained weight. And then doc gave me another higher dose. And then Felt, so so that's a story right that to me I know what's going on in the lab. 
I know what's going on in their bodies right. that's making that happen. You've heard it thousands of times. I mean, you've right. been doing this for years and years. Right. And you have, but if you don't take a temperature, you don't find a fever. Yeah. If doctors don't look or draw blood and find your estrone level as a male or and estradiol level after you've had your testosterone, then they're not going to know what's wrong with you. They're just going to say, oh, let's take some more testosterone. So that's that's key. It's very important that they know you you can make estrogen, that it can inactivate your testosterone. There's something to do for it. Which is pretty inexpensive and easy to do. Right. It is. It's now it's, it's very inexpensive. And except for the phar- pharmacists, and like one in 10 pharmacists will be like, I'm not giving that to him. He's a He's a... Male. <laughs> and that's for breast cancer of women, but it's not. We use it off label for men's breast cancer, men's gynecomastia. When they have man breasts yeah. at any age, we use Arimidex right. to bring that down because it's a much better treatment than surgery. Oh, yeah. So we use it for f- fibroids. When women have big fibroids of the uterus, Arimidex helps shut that down and make it smaller so that we can operate on them, and take the fibroids out. Right. But we also use it for uh, women who make estrone, but not don't have breast cancer, but they make a lot of estrone and belly fat. And so we use Arimidex both in our pellets and orally mm-hmm. to decrease that est- estrone, which is the bad estrogen, uh, to decrease that and to help them lose weight. So it's a very versatile drug. There's two other aromatase inhibitors, but they are permanent. They attached to the receptor site permanently. They're not reversible. Right. And they seem to make people gain weight instead of lose weight. And Arimidex makes people lose weight. So I've never given the other two because my patients are not up for gaining weight. And I and it's not healthy to gain belly fat. So I don't know she, what, she what that, that, why that happens with those other two medications, which But will, you know will, that it does. But I know it does. And, and to me, that's a sidebar. Our last podcast on the accumulation of medical data and statistics mm-hmm. and so on, that is a piece of information that doctors ought to know. That's right. And and that's a good use of those data acquisition points. Well, that's that's what you have to do. It, it's it under the experience. complications. Yes. Uh, under the two, uh, you know, when you look at comparisons, mm-hmm. there's lots of medical articles that compare all these drugs that are supposed right. to do the same thing. Right. And the uh, breast cancer doctors like the permanent ones. Because it permanently inactivates an estrogen receptor. For their focused concern. Because all they're caring cancer. about is breast cancer, yes. which makes sense. It does. But for us, we're talking about healthy people, post-menopause, post-andropause, uh, right. who have too much estrogen. And we don't have to have it. It is not important to inactivate that receptor because the receptor sites shared by estrogen and testosterone. I don't Same really... Site don't want to kill off those. You don't want to permanently block and close it. So right. it, it, it also then loses a testosterone receptor. Right. So that's a significant concern for mm-hmm. following testosterone treatment. Right. There's another concern. It has to yes. do with uh, iron absorption in the body and red blood cells. Can you right. talk about that? So when we give testosterone to aging men, more than women usually that women do this a little bit but it's much more common in men they absorb a lot of iron and since men don't have periods and you know they don't lose blood regularly like women do prior to menopause men collect all this iron and testosterone makes them collect more iron than they normally would so they make a lot of red blood cells or they take that iron and they deposit it in their tissues. Mm. Now that's a genetic thing. Both are genetic. Whichever way you're going to do one of these genetic abnormalities. Iron absorption. Right, but not everybody has this. But yeah. I've I've seen it quite a lot. I yeah. mean, I've seen it one or the other in fifty percent of the people I treat. They get higher and they have names for each of those. So the higher number of red blood cells is called polycythemia, and it means that you have a high level of red blood cells and the reason that's important, red blood cells carry your oxygen. That's a good thing. But we're looking at hematocrit, which is a percentage of your blood that is red cells versus the percentage of your blood that is serum. Okay? Just the clear fluid. Okay. So if you have too many of the red cells, it sludges. It slows down the flow of blood through the small capillaries. Does that mean the heart's working harder? The heart, heart works harder and... Basically, it can kind of clog up the tiny little capillaries, mm-hmm. so you're not delivering oxygen. Is that like what they call phlebotomy? No, phlebotomy is just taking blood. 
What was the thing that Richard Nixon had? That he would get blood clots in his legs. Oh, phlebitis. Phlebitis. That's, that's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. Whole okay. different thing. Whole different genetic thing. This is okay. has nothing Sorry. to do with that. Sorry, sidetracked you. That's okay. I just yeah. didn't know about Nixon. Anyway, I was just a small child then. <laughs> You know, you just talked all day and not done that to me. I know, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, in any case, the polycythemia is usual. It could be a sign of something bad. Usually, we evaluate patients to make sure all it is is too many red blood cells. Right. Once we know that, that so this is taking some like evaluation and treatment. Right. Uh, and then we send our patients who just have pure polycythemia three times a year, sometimes four, sometimes less to the Red Cross mm -hmm. with a prescription to remove a unit of blood and throw it away. Because even though it sounds like it's a great thing, for some reason they won't use that yeah. to to transfer into it or do, as a donation to another person. So they take that, they throw it away, and patients tell me they feel lighter and they, I mean, they literally feel different mm. after they've had this removed. I, have, I even had one gentleman who said, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I give blood every six weeks, which is the most frequent you can give it. He goes, I just go and give blood every six weeks because, because it makes me feel better. Well, he wasn't on testosterone and his testosterone was low. He had this and he knew he had put these two things together. Yeah. That when he gave blood, he felt better. Well, he had polycythemia before he even got testosterone. Wow. So we knew that. He'd already been evaluated. All he had to do was give blood, and he was fine. So it wasn't really an issue. It's so unusual for a guy to know that, because guys generally don't pay that kind of attention. I know. I know. He was very sensitive yeah. and very introspective. Probably had too much estrogen. No, he didn't. <laughs> In any case, gosh. Just, I mean, he... <laughs> Whack. In any case, that that's what polycythemia is, and it's easily treated, and it's not a contraindication to taking testosterone. So when we look for other reasons that getting too much iron is mm -hmm. a problem, mm -hmm. um, hemochromatosis is, is a genetic disease that causes you to absorb too much iron anyway, and instead of storing it in your blood cells, you might have a normal blood count. You store it in your brain, your liver, your eyes, all kinds of tissues that shouldn't be storing iron. And that damages those it's like tissues. It's like a heavy metal buildup. It's like here. a heavy metal poisoning. Right. So those patients must be worked up. I usually either send them to GI if they've got a problem with their liver, mm -hmm. or I send them to um, a hematologist, oncologist, that's who does the evaluation. Make sure there's nothing terribly wrong other than hemochromatosis. Mm -hmm. And then they order blood draws like ev like every week for a while to get off this iron. Wow. And as they do that, then then the patient feels better and better and better. So it it's important to me because somebody with hemochromatosis, I give testosterone to. First of all, I might make them worse, and so right. I need to know. Second of all, they don't feel good on testosterone. Because this somehow, and I don't know the mechanism, blocks the ability of testosterone to improve their quality of life. They just don't feel relief of any of the symptoms until I get rid of that blood. Yeah. Then when I get rid of the blood, they feel great from the testosterone. Wow. They feel great from the, the blood draw. So it it's isn't almost a, as if it can't get through the sludge. Yeah, it's, it is. But this is a little, it's a little different. No, no, I mean, I think it's blo I think it has to do with the, the neurotransmitters. And, yeah. But it, it changes the metabolism of how you use your testosterone. You just don't get the benefit. So this is something that if you were just a, a guy that says, yeah, I give testosterone. Here's a shot. I give you a shot every I mean, two weeks or every right. month. And you don't know any of this. Right. You're not testing for it either. So right. somebody could get really sick really fast as a result of what you're as doing. a result of what you're doing right. when it's a very manageable thing i mean it's obviously doesn't take i mean once i've evaluated a patient and i know that's what they have we watch of course the levels of testosterone make sure it's not too high but we make sure we aren't going to give them more testosterone unless they went and gave blood well most of the guys that come in are for you for what you mm -hmm. do are older Yes, and I don't give I don't give testosterone to, to people men. who are young right. who have testosterone of their own. I just don't do that. Right. So in aging men, a common anxiety and a thing that they monitor and watch that we talk about, we've done a couple podcasts mm -hmm. on, is their uh, PSA count. 
Right. And testosterone can create a side effect issue with PSA count. It can, for a short period of time, mm-hmm. stimulate the PSA, and then it comes back down. After the, the prostate mm-hmm. has filled with testosterone, all the receptors are filled, right. then the PSA comes back down. So it's not a sign of cancer if you've just had testosterone given and all of a sudden your PSA goes up. It'll come back down. If it's cancer, it doesn't come back down. Right, 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 right. But the the DHT uh, and the, is it estrone? Estrone and DHT are the two hormones right. that don't, they don't, don't necessarily cause prostate cancer, but they can stimulate prostate cancer. But even worse, not even worse, but even more common, right. they stimulate the growth of the prostate, not cancerous growth, right. but they Swells, the prostate gets bigger. I, it's not that big. I mean, it's the prostate gets bigger, but it what that does is it wraps around the urethra. Right. So you can't empty your bladder. Right. So that's why men talk about, oh, it's I gotta go to the bathroom all the time. Yeah. So it's a it's a natural aging thing. Mm-hmm. DHT and estrone both go up as we age. So when those two hormones go up as testosterone goes down, the prostate enlarges. When we give testosterone, the prostate enlarges slightly at first. When all the receptor sites are full, it gets smaller. Mm -hmm. And that's because then DHT and estrone decrease. And DHT is dihydrotestosterone. Now, that's another thing. You need some of, but you don't want too much. Right. Because of the of the prostate growth issues, so it is one of those things I have to watch and keep an eye on. And well, if you don't do that, back in your office with a chemistry set, mixing all these things and trying to get it, it's all in my mind. It's all in your head, but you have to know. <laughs> and it does but you matter. have you have I mean, to know stuff. all of these things, and and I don't believe that you can safely give testosterone unless you know all these troubleshooting right. uh, ways to to manage a patient, it's just like anything else. You don't just go do surgery and not know the complications of it. You have to know how to handle the complications and fix them in anything that we do. But the way I give it with pellets, which make very little uh, estrone or DHT for most men, and, uh, and I know what to do with the other issues, it is very safe. Well, in our book, The Secret Female Hormone, you mm-hmm. talk about training affiliate doctors. Mm-hmm. to do things the way that you do things. Mm-hmm. And your concern is exactly what we've been talking about in this podcast. If you're going to provide testosterone replacement for men, you need to know these things, that these side effects exist and complications can occur, and you need to know how to treat them. You need to know how to regulate dosages, and you need to know how to measure amounts of estrogen and DHT and testosterone and the difference between free and, and total, uh, whatever the right amount is. And doctors that don't do this don't know these things. It's not because they're bad doctors. It's just not what they know. It's not their area. And so... Mm -hmm. um, And even if it is their area, it's very easy just to give a shot and say, see you later, buddy. Or give give a cream or gel and see... But if patients come in and say, I've got this problem, you have to know why they have that problem and how to fix it. And how to fix it. So the point being, if you receive testosterone replacement therapy or someone you know does or is about to, they need to be going to a doctor that knows these things and watches for these side effects and treats them rather than just going to get a shot. And we'll have all of that in our new book. We will. Book Thank for you Men. Thank very much for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.